Hi everyone and welcome along to the Ergonomically Speaking podcast, the podcast that aims to help you reduce and even eliminate work-related discomfort. I am your host, Neve Pentney of Boyne Ergonomics. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you're able to take away some useful practical advice from this podcast to help you reduce your own risk of discomfort at the workplace or help manage the risks among the people that you might be responsible for. So now that we know why we're here, let's get started. Hello, 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 and welcome back, guys. Welcome along to episode 13 of the Ergonomically Speaking podcast, where today I'm going to be talking to you all about your screen, putting the S in DSE. After all, when you think about it, this is where you spend your time looking. All those hours at the desk, all those hours at the chair, this is where your attention is focused. So today I am going to be talking to you about how we can best set up our screens so that we are reducing our risk of musculoskeletal discomfort, eye strain, eye discomfort, fatigue and headaches and migraines. Um, And if you think about it, we spend so much time looking at them. And I have found over the last two years, people have put so much emphasis on the chair, on the desk, on where they're putting everything, at their keyboard and their mouse. And sometimes the screen gets forgotten, even though it is probably one of the most important parts of the workstation. After all, everything is built around it and it's where you put your attention for the time that you're at the desk. So it is so important that we get both the placement of your screens and the settings of the screens right and best suited to what you do and where you do it. Um, And I found over the last few weeks of doing in-person face-to-face assessments that at least half have their screen set up incorrectly and this I think is because well firstly a lot of people just aren't really sure of how to set them up and secondly back in the office environment there's a lot of hot desking going on in some places that I go to and a lot of times people find it easier to just sit down in the chair take the workstation as it is plug in the laptop and start working. And some people are even working off just the laptop in the office. But screen position and screen settings are really, really important. I'm going to talk you through that today. And if you have your screen set up incorrectly, or if you have the wrong settings for where you are, it's going to encourage poor posture because you're going to either be looking down, looking up, leaning in, squinting. It's going to increase the risk of eye strain and fatigue because your eyes are going to have to work harder to read those images and to read that text and to focus the lens. So you do increase the risk of eye strain and fatigue. And of course, then that can both the poor posture and the eye strain can increase the risk of developing headaches. And it could be a trigger for migraines. I know migraines are very individual, but it could be a trigger. So we're going to look firstly at where to place your monitor. So the first thing I am going to say, and this may seem really, really obvious, but I've learned over the last week that not everyone knows or not everyone's even aware of where their monitor is relative to their own body position. Your screen that you are looking at for the majority of the day should be directly in front of you. Your keyboard, your screen. So alignment should be you, your keyboard, your screen, all in front of you so that the spine is naturally aligned, the head is on top of the shoulders, and you're not rotating from side to side or you're not twisting the body to try and look at the screen and type towards the screen. Everything should be in front of you. And that is if you're working at a standard DSE workstation. I know, of course, If you have a slightly non-standard DSE job, for example, in a reception area, um, in a GP, in a doctor's, I know there are variations based on what you do and who you're interacting with. But I'm talking about people who work at the computer workstation for the majority of the day. Your screen should be in front of you, your keyboard next, and then you all in a nice straight line. And this is to reduce the strain on the spine, shoulders, neck and eyes okay so that's first placement should be centralized 
I'll talk about multiple screens now in a few minutes, but if we start off assuming you have at least one, the main one should be directly in front of you. Height-wise, ideally, your screen should be level with your eye line when you're sitting upright with your back against your chair in a head and neck in a nice relaxed upright position. So what I like to call your natural head position, if you're walking down the road and you're looking around you and you're looking in front of you, that's your natural head position. That's where you want your screen to be. So your eye line should be level with the top third of the screen. And that way, the screen will be in your field of vision when you're looking straight ahead. Now, that applies to users who either don't wear glasses or wear single vision lenses. For somebody who is wearing bifocal lenses or very focal lenses, depending on the prescription, you would normally bring that screen down a little bit because in bifocals and in some very focals, the lens for medium to up close work and reading is on the bottom of the glasses. And if you position your monitor, like I've told you there now, with your eye line level with the top third of it, what's going to happen is when you want to see higher up on the screen, you're going to have to tilt the head back to try and look down through that bottom portion of the glasses. Now, in some very focals, it actually doesn't matter because the VDU lens is in the middle and that's fine. But what I would always get people to do is try it. If you're wearing very focals, if you're wearing bifocals, bring the screen down a little bit just below your eye line and actually tilt the top of the screen back a bit. So you're bringing the image when you look straight ahead, you're actually bringing the image towards the lower lens in the glasses so you can see it without having to look up, tilt the head back and look down through the bottom of the lenses. So the guidelines are slightly different for very focal and bifocal lens wearers. What I always tell people to is, you know if your screen position's right for you. If when you sit upright and you're looking straight ahead, you can see the screen. And that seems really obvious. But as I said, I've seen so much over the last couple of weeks, people that have the screens really high, people that have the screens really low, or bifocal wearers who haven't given any consideration to the fact that they're wearing bifocals and they've tried their best to set their screens up as per standard guidelines. But then they're finding they're getting a bit of tension and, and you know, and a bit of fatigue in the neck and they're not really sure what's going on. And it's just because the screen is too high for them. So that's your height. And that applies to a monitor, a standard monitor. It applies to a laptop. And if you use it as a screen, then yes, it applies to a tablet. Because if you are spending a portion of your day looking at these screens and using them in the workstation, you want them positioned correctly. So I'm not just talking about your external monitor. I'm also, when I talk about screens, I'm also talking about the laptop screen. I'm also talking about a tablet screen if you use it in the workplace. Another thing I'm often asked is, how far should the monitor be from me? So to reduce the risk of eye strain and reduce the work that the eye muscles have to do, ideally, it should be arm's length from you. So if you hold your hand out in front of you and you're sitting in your typing position and you reach your hand out in front of you, the screen should be at the end of your fingers. Now, depending on the screen, you may not be able to read it at that distance. So if you have, for example, only a laptop screen and you put it at arm's length away from you, I have found, and I've done it myself before I got my own screen, I have found that with smaller text, you either have to zoom in to make it bigger, which in that case means you have to do a little bit of extra mouse work to be able to see everything because you have to move the image across or the text across. Or you lean in towards it. Instead of sitting back in your chair and letting the image come to you, you lean yourself towards the image. 
So what I always say, position-wise, we're always aiming for roughly arm's length away. If you cannot read your text, so if you have a laptop, for example, and you cannot read the text at that distance, or if you have an external monitor and you cannot read the text at that distance, the first thing I would recommend is getting an eye test with the optician, especially if it's been more than two years. I would definitely recommend that just to make sure that if there is a deficiency in your visual acuity that you get lenses because that might be the problem. The screen might actually not be the problem. It could be your vision. And it is important to keep on top of that and get that eye test carried out every two years and more if you feel that your acuity has decreased in that time. The other thing I would say is if you're using a tablet or a laptop and you've been resisting getting a screen, which I understand, especially if you're working from home, I would go ahead and invest in a monitor. Um, as someone who's done it myself, I have been working remotely for myself now for three years, just coming on three years, and I only last week got a monitor because I always felt I didn't need one. My, my laptop was always on a stand and I could read it, but I have noticed time is ticking on. I'm not getting any younger. And the last few weeks, I did notice that actually I was leaning in towards the laptop and I was zooming in on the text. I just couldn't comfortably read it when I was sitting back in my chair. So I did it. I gave in and I got myself a monitor and I am all the better for it. So I do understand, especially if you're working from home, the reluctance to bring the monitor in to your home area. But if you are struggling to read the screen and if you have your glasses and everything's fine in that department, well, then it may just be the screen is too small for the work that you're doing. So I would look into that. Um, so get your eye test if you're struggling. Wear your glasses if you've been advised to do so. Get a screen if you're struggling with a small laptop or a tablet. And that should help because we should, corrected or uncorrected, we should be able to read our screens arm's length away when we're sitting back in the chair. And the reason for this distance is it is to reduce the work the eyes have to do by not having it so close to you and reduce the effect of the light from the screen on your eyes by not having it too close. Having a further than arm distance, well, even with correction and even with a good screen, you may find yourself leaning towards it. So this has been found to be the most appropriate distance for a computer screen to reduce the risk of strain and poor posture. So definitely, if you found you're struggling to read text on your screen, get your eyes tested. And if you're using a tablet or a laptop, consider adding in a monitor to your setup. Another thing I'm often asked about is glare. Like, what is glare and why do I care about glare? And why am I always asking about glare? Basically, glare, what glare will do, one, your eyes, again, your eye muscles and, and your eyes have to work really hard to adjust to all the different light levels. So you won't just have the light levels of your text and of your images, but you're going to have this additional external glare that your eyes are trying to see through and decipher what's on your screen. It can make it difficult to see. And the other thing I find, again, is people sometimes move themselves around to try and see past the glare instead of addressing the glare, which can cause repetitive postures and static postures and poor postures and all these kind of things. So instead of actually sitting upright, looking straight ahead, I often see people shifting themselves around. So with glare reflections, you want to try and minimize or eliminate, if you can, any glares or reflections on your screen. To do that, ideally your monitor should be positioned at a right angle to your natural light source, your window or your door, whatever it may be. Which means you should get the light without the glare. Um, if it is not possible to position yourself perpendicular, then I would position the, nat the screen, sorry, so that the natural light is behind the screen. Okay. Try and avoid having your screen facing the window or facing the natural light. Or as I've seen it sometimes, I have seen a number of people who have had the window behind the screen. So in theory, it's not too bad, but they have a big mirror behind them. So the light is coming in the window, but it's bouncing off the mirror and showing up on their screen. So there shouldn't be anything reflective behind you if your window is behind the screen. 
if you cannot avoid glare for whatever reason, if, if the window doesn't have blinds or if you just cannot position yourself either perpendicularly or with the window behind the screen, then use blinds, use curtains and um, try and tilt your screen or you might have to actually tilt or maneuver your screen around at different times of the day to try and accommodate the glare that's coming in the window. But this is very individual. It depends so much on the room you're in and the time of day and even the time of year. And glare might not be a problem for the majority of the day. It could be a problem for an hour of a day. But we're trying to eliminate as much as we can because it is more work on the eyes and because it can encourage posture. And how do you know if you have glare? Oh, one thing I want to say actually is I found not so much at home, but definitely in the office, glare from the overhead lighting can be a problem in that you're positioned perfectly at the window. There's no natural glare, but you're getting glare from the light above you. To eliminate that, just adjust the angle tilt the top of the screen down a small bit and that will get rid of that glare from that overhead light. If you don't know if you've glare, the easiest way to see is sit at your desk in your normal position and turn the screen off. Glare will show up on the black screen so you will know if it's a problem. So if you are putting a workstation together or you're moving your workstation around, do it with your screens off because then you'll know if the new position issue with glare or with reflections. I said, it was, you know, if you're not wearing very focal and if you're not wearing eye focals, sitting upright, looking straight ahead, your eye line should be at the top third for all screens. I just want to insert here. Remember, if you're hot desk, chair first to get the elbow okay and in the right position height wise for you in this seated position and you're using sit -stand desk you should not have to adjust the monitor when you move to the standing position is off for the desk. So if your position and your screen and you bring the desk up to standing height, the you shouldn't have to. Do it. So as I said, position wise, if you're using your single monitor, just the one screen, you want it directly in front of you. Eye line roughly level with the top third or slightly below if you wear very focals or bifocals. And roughly arm's length away from you. And this will help to keep you upright, aligned with the ear, over the shoulder, over the hip, back against the chair, nice, relaxed and supported. If you're using two screens, common now, this is something I get asked a lot, how should I position my two screens? It very much depends on how you use them. So the first thing I will say, if you're using one screen for about 80% of your work, so your work is this one screen, use a second screen, either a laptop, a tablet, or another monitor, for about 20% of your work, so you might leave your emails on it, you might leave your teams on it, you might leave, leave an odd reference document on it, but you'll notice that you're doing the majority of your work on the one screen. That one screen should be centrally positioned directly. The 20% screen should then be positioned either side of the monitor. Now, this can be restricted because of space. But I normally recommend to have it on the side of your dominant eye. Now, for the majority of people, it's going to be the same as your dominant hand. So, if you're right handed, your dominant eye will be your right, and vice versa. Not always the case. But you can find out by just sitting in front of your screen and blocking one eye off, blocking the other one and see which is the better one for that computer distance. That's the side, if space allows, that that second screen should be on. Position it right next to it, aiming to get it roughly the same height and angle that second screen in slightly towards you. Don't have the two of them flat side by side. Angle that second screen in. So it's kind of looking at you. Um, and looking at your position 
And the, I suppose the reason for that is to keep the image close and reduce the repetitive neck postures. So that's how you would set up your screen for 80-20. Some people using two screens actually use both 50-50. Right? They use them the same because of the type of work that they do. And if this is the case, then again, you want them side by side. This time, angle both inwards. So making like a slight V shape with the screens. And have you in the middle. So you are positioned centrally between the screens. Your keyboard is positioned centrally between the screens. Two screens are side by side. Angle them slightly towards you and aim to get them at the right height, similar height if you can. And again, this means that on both screens, the images are looking at you. So again, we're trying to reduce repetitive neck movements and strain and improve your ability to see what's on both screens. Okay, now with 80 20 screens and with 50 50 if one of them is a laptop or a tablet it should not be flat on the table it should be elevated on a stand or boxes or books or whatever you may have to bring it up in similar height to your external screen and if you're using a screen 80 20 well then the external screen should be directly in front of you and the 20 percent screen the laptop should be to the side i have seen so many home setups where the laptop is the one in front and the monitor is to the side and it's either because of A, the camera for Teams or B, people just had the laptop there first and the screen came second. So when they got the screen, they just put it on the desk next to the laptop and didn't really think about it. If you're going 80-20 with screens, the external screen should be directly in front of you and it should be screen one and use the laptop or the tablet as the holding screen or your email screen. Don't worry too much about camera position for Teams. Yes, it will be slightly off. And if this bothers you so much, I would just get an external webcam, to be honest, because your screen position is much more important um, long term for your health and well-being. Now, with three screens, again, I've seen this this week actually where I'm working. There's quite a few people who are using three screens and it's a combination of three external monitors or two external monitors and a laptop. OK, so this is increasing just because so much of our work is now digital based on your role. If you're using th three screens, one should be directly in front of you. And again, this will be the one where you do most of your work on. Your two additional screens should be either side of this central monitor and angle them both towards you. So they're kind of coming around you a little bit in an arc. So again, we're reducing ne repetitive adverse neck postures by keeping the main screen directly in front and we're and curving the other two, angling them inwards. And also we're helping our eyes to be able to see them because they're closer. When you curve them inwards and angle them inwards, they're a little bit closer to your eyes. So remember, the monitor should be set up so that you can see most of the screen, if not all of it, with the minimum repetitive neck movements when you're looking straight ahead. And having this correct positioning will help reduce your adverse postures. It will help reduce your repetitive movements. Therefore, it's going to reduce your risk of developing any problems with the upper back, neck, shoulders, and even the lower back. And it'll reduce your risk of eye strain, fatigue, and headaches. Now, that's positioning. Okay, and that's, that's half of it, I will say. Okay, so getting the position right is important. But what's also important are your settings. So, like eye discomfort is a really common complaint. And I found it myself anecdotally definitely an increase in the amount of people complaining of eye problems such as dry eyes, red eyes, kind of itchy eyes, a bit sore, headaches, and actually an overall lack of concentration. And what I found is, especially with home workers, a lot of this was to do with the settings of the screen plus the pure amount of time, increased amount of time spent in front of them compared to pre-COVID times. So making sure that you have your screen set up for where you're working is really important because it will reduce the workload on your eyes and it will reduce discomfort. Um, so specifically, what I'm going to look at now is the contrast, the brightness and the color temperature or the hue settings. So looking at contrast first, when we talk about contrast on a screen, what we are talking about is the ratio of luminance between the brightest white that can be produced and the darkest black that can be produced. So therefore, really what I'm saying is it's how your text 
stands out from the background. OK, if your contrast levels are too low or they are too high, it can reduce, increase the risk of eye fatigue. And usually on a mobile device like a tablet or a laptop, these contrast levels are set and you can't really adjust them. They're optimized. If you are using an external monitor, however, you can adjust the, the contrast levels by pressing the menu or the settings button on the screen and navigating through the options. Check yours when you get a chance, ideally, to reduce the risk of eye strain. Your contrast levels should be between 65 and 70. Um, I know I checked mine today. Mine's at 70 and that works absolutely fine for me. Um, so I would always check that. The net, if you're having any eye discomfort. The next thing I would check, and this I think is one of the ones that had the biggest impact with homeworking, it's actually the brightness of the screen. So the right brightness level or the best brightness level of your screen will change depending on where you're working. So if we take the office, for example, OK, standard office light levels, so say around 500 lux, which is, you know, the standard good, nice, bright office. If you're in that setting, usually the brightness of your screens will already be optimized, but it should be around 60. OK, if you go into your brightness settings, a brightness level of 60 is usually enough in the office environment. If you start to go higher than that, you can kind of wash out the image a little bit and it can be hard for your eyes. To see. And obviously you're increasing the brightness and the blue light. So that can be a lot of work on the eyes. Having it too low, again, you're just making it harder for the eyes to see. And it will actually make the light level around you feel higher. So there should be a balance between the brightness level of your screen and the environment. So if you're in the office, and you check it, they're normally set to around 60, an external monitor. And your laptop should be around the same. So I find brightness is not a huge issue in the office. However, where it is an issue is at home. So very few, I won't say all, but very few home offices, home workstations, have lighting levels as high as your office. They're normally a little bit lower. And Depending on where you've set up your workstation, it could be much lower. It could be around the 100 lux mark or lower 150 lux. And also it can change. So if you think of autumn and winter when, you know, light levels start to decrease in the early afternoon onwards, you might have a nice bright light in the morning. But come two, three, four o'clock, your light level can dip. And obviously home lighting is really important when you're working from home. But so is making sure that the brightness level of your screen matches the environment and we can do that two ways so one what i would say is if you're working from home a brightness level in a standard homework area a brightness level of around 40 is actually normally enough so bringing the screen brightness down to be more balanced with your environmental light okay and again the lower the levels of light in your environment the lower the brightness setting should be but what you can also do is increase the light levels of your environment. So that is another option for you. If you don't want to adjust the brightness of the screen, but you feel that it's too bright for the room that you're in, you can increase the light levels in your room by using like a ring light or task lighting or strip lighting, anything like that in the area around and behind the screen. And that will illuminate that area and bring it into balance with the screen brightness. But generally speaking, when you're working from home, a brightness level of about 40 is usually enough. Um, to reduce the risk of eye strain. So that is important. I have found definitely a lot of people working from home, the screen was just way too bright and they were getting headaches where they hadn't got them before and sore, tired eyes where it hadn't been a problem. And it was just, there was too much of a difference between how bright the screen was and the environment around them. One thing I will say here is, I know it's not allowed on all work laptops, but there is there are apps you can get that will actually monitor and adjust the brightness levels now the one that i use myself on my own laptop is called f lux and what that does is it uses my position to estimate what the light levels are and it will adjust them during the day so for example in the morning when i turn on my laptop it's quite bright so i would have like a cool hue and it's quite bright but if i you'll notice then during the day that actually my brightness levels start to decrease as the light level decreases and not only that, but it also changes the temperature of my light, so of my screen. So whereas it might be nice, bright and cool 
in the morning, come kind of four or five o'clock onwards, it will start to turn a slight yellowish hue and will be less bright. So you can get apps to, for your devices that will monitor that for you if you don't want to monitor it yourself during the day. But I definitely, if anyone's getting eye fatigue, headaches or migraines, I would look at the brightness level of your screen. Um, and also, I should say, if your device has the option to block the blue light, I would do that. I know it takes a little bit of getting used to because the screen looks different, but I would recommend it um, doing that. And another setting that you can adjust is the color temperature or the hue. So ideally, if your work area is bright, the color hue should be more on the cool side. And if your work area is slightly duller or less bright, your hue levels should be warmer. So cool tones, which are around 6,500 K, is your standard monitor office setting. And it's fine for the office. You know, offices are bright. On some devices, you can change them from cool to warm by turning on the night mode, which actually reduces the blue light emitted. And it changes the color tone from cool to a more warmer yellow hue, which is around 3,400 K. And as I said, there are apps available like Flux that can do that for you. But you're always trying to match your monitor settings to time that you're working and the light level of the area that you're working. But I do recommend um, if you can turning off the blue light by using night mode or just putting the blue light filter on or different devices have different settings. Even your phones have them now as well. Um, I've been asked before about blue light glasses. I can't comment on if they're effective or not. Um, you know, if an optician recommends them, I wouldn't argue against them. But at the same time, I haven't found much in the way of evidence that they're actually effective. I think like a lot of equipment, my fear or my concern with the likes of blue light glasses is people think that because they're wearing them, they can spend more time in front of the screen without taking a break. And that's just not true. Um, and that brings me nicely on to your eye rest breaks. So we've looked at positioning. I've had a quick look there at your settings. Those two things combined, of course, will help to reduce your risk of musculoskeletal injury, eye strain, headaches. But as with all equipment, as with your chairs and as with your keyboard and your mouse and your screen, the equipment can only do so much. You have to take breaks and give your body and your eyes a rest. OK, so if you remember. Like when you're looking at anything. Your lens has to be focused to do that. And how is your lens focused? Well, you've got tiny muscles in your eyes. So if you're looking at your screen for ages and ages and ages, those teeny weeny muscles in your eyes that are holding your lens in place so you can read what you need to read on the screen, they get tired too. Just like the back, just like the neck, shoulders. OK, when we are static and looking at the screen for a long time. So they get tired and vision can get blurry and people can report, especially in the late afternoon into the evening, that their eyes are kind of blurry and they feel very, very tired. The muscles are tired from all the work they've had to do during the day. And if you think about it, a lot of our breaks from the screen involves just going to another screen, which is either the TV or the phone. So it's not really a break. So your eyes need a break from middle distance work, from screen work. And also, when you're looking at a screen, and I find the same in driving, actually, you're concentrating because you're trying to take in information. So we're concentrating. When you concentrate, your blinking rate slows down. And we need to blink because that's how we keep our eyes hydrated. So people often find their eyes are red and they're itchy and they're irritated and dry. And again, it's just from prolonged looking at the screens where the eyes are drying out because you're not blinking enough to keep them hydrated. So really, we should be taking frequent breaks. Now, you know, I'm a big advocate of the micro break. I don't think anyone should ever spend any more than 45 minutes continuously at any kind of desk sitting or standing before you go and do something else for a minute or two. That is fine, but it's not enough for the eyes. So I'm sure you've heard this rule before, the 20-20-20 rule. It is recommended that anyone who's using a computer, every 20 minutes, they look away from the screen at something about 20 feet away or in the distance for at least 20 seconds. And this is to allow time for the eye muscles to recover. And they're only tiny, so they recover very quickly. And also to let the eyes rehydrate. So I suppose one of the benefits of sitting near a window or even having your screen in front of the window 
um, or having a window behind the screen, sorry, is that you tend to get easily distracted. Something moves, something flutters by and you will draw your eye to it, which is great because you're looking off out the window for a couple of seconds and you're not looking at the screen. But we need to be doing that at least every 20 minutes. So if you're on Teams calls, you don't have to look at the screen all the time. Look away for 20 seconds, lean back, look at the ceiling, look around you. Look at nothing in particular. I wouldn't get so caught up on the 20 feet away. What I normally say is just look at nothing. Just move your eyes around. Spot different things in the room or spot different things out the window for 20 seconds. Or great, if you can leave the work desk every 20 20 minutes, that would be even better for you. But we can't always. So every 20 minutes or so or more, listen more if you can, 20 minutes is the max. Look away and give your eye muscles a break and let them get rehydrated. Now, I'm going to finish up and say that regardless of how good you think your vision is, we still should get eye tests every two years to keep an eye on your visual acuity, but also to keep an eye on the health of the eye and make sure there's nothing going on behind the eye. Um, And in Ireland anyway, I know pre-COVID, a lot of um, employers would have provided this, but it it is covered under your PRSI anyway. So if you just book in for like your standard normal average eye test, if you don't need glasses, it shouldn't cost you anything. So it's something that we should do every two years just as part of keeping an eye on our health and well-being and spotting if something is developing or our eyesight is decreasing before it becomes a bigger problem. So if you want to see a visual on how I recommend and how best practice recommends you position your monitors, I do have a blog on it with images in it. I will put a link to that in the show notes. Um, As always, you can follow me on my social media and I'll put all my social media handles in my show notes as well and my email address. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope that there was something practical in this and that if you are listening to this at your workstation or in the office, that you were able to work through it a little bit and see if your monitors were set up correctly for you. And if not, identify the action that you need to take to correct that. As always, I'm available if anyone wants to get in touch on my email, either to ask a question or if anyone wants to recommend a topic for a future podcast, I'm always open to suggestions. So I leave it there at that and I will talk to you guys in the next episode. And until then, stay well, everyone.